You know, earlier in the discussion, we spoke about private equity. And, you know, you've been at the forefront of many of these deals, which has actually lit up the landscape over the last couple of years. The number of unicorns India has created because of private equity money uh, coming into many of these digital enterprises. I mean, you were in the SoftBank Ola deal as well, uh, personally. But what do you make of this trend? Because, you know, I was speaking to a person you know well, Ronnie Skruwala, you did the Disney UTV deal as well. And he said, you know, private equity can become a, an end in itself. I mean, that becomes the game rather than uh, focusing on the business. Uh, would you sound a word of caution as well, uh, given the kind of valuations which are being drummed up by this private equity infusion in India today? You can't have it both ways, right? You can't say, I want these incredible valuations and then not welcome the person who's going to give them to you. So I think it's a mix between where the promoter wants to draw his or her own line and the private equity that is willing to bet on you. For the young unicorns, the private equity are betting on individuals, on people who will have the energy to turn the value that they give into even higher values. And I think that uh, in today's world where, you know, uh, India is getting a very nice share of the wallet from all the people, from all private equity. Uh, it's really one where there are too few deals and a lot more money chasing those deals. And therefore the value goes up. You take a promoter like Ronnie that has been successful time and again and has basically been able to create these incredibly valuable institutions and companies. So people are betting on him, right? And the young people that he's working with. So if they give the value, then they expect an exit. And that's the rule of the game, that if you want a value which is great, you give me an exit that is greater. And so that cycle and that merry-go-round goes on. But I think that private equity has proved immensely important and valuable to the country because it has allowed the world to recognize our companies. And it has put a value on our companies that didn't exist 10 years ago. So today, when you see our mid-sized companies, not even our necessarily our listed ones, but our young entrepreneurs and our mid-sized companies, getting the sort of money that they are getting, that can only be good. And if the exit is something that the private equity asks for, you negotiate it, you get the best deal you can. And then that's the price of the money. I also want to ask you about some of these big deals which are happening in the disinvestment landscape. Uh, I don't know whether you were involved in any of the major mandates which the government recently put out, but Air India got done. And now the government is trying to sell a BPCL. The, now, what kind of legal bedrock is important to get these transactions done, uh, Zia, in your eyes? Because, you know, on one hand, you're trying to sell BPCL. On the other hand, the government stops retail prices of fuel being raised in deregulated fuels for a very long period of time, leading to huge losses for uh, the existing companies. Do you think some of these kind of legal provisions need to change uh, to be able to attract really quality bidders for some of these government assets? Uh, uh, the basic legal provisions need to be in place. See, I think the government's been pretty smart. So we represented Tata in the Air India deal, right? And ultimately, the government, to my mind, behaved like a private party transacting. So if the entire debt burden would not have been able to be taken over to get a good bid, they dealt with that, right? They dealt with that. When it came to unions and employees, they dealt with that. So I think that uh, the disinvestment arm of the government has figured that for best value, they've got to give an attractive deal. Now, when you're talking about BPCL, if the losses continue and the deregulation uh, and the pricing does not get resolved, the government's just not going to get a good price. Okay. We spoke about many aspects of corporate law. And since we were speaking candidly about the public aspects of it, I want to ask you about what, where you stand on this whole controversy which is brewing in Karnataka with the ban of uh, hijab in colleges. Uh, the Karnataka High Court recently upheld one of these rulings. Uh, but if you were part of this case, I mean, what, what would your contention be on something which has struck such a national chord? 
I don't want to say much about it except that I think that my personal view is that religion is such a personal aspect of one's daily life and that to intrude beyond the point is counterproductive. Uh, the ill will that you breed is not as important as the feeling of security that you need in a population of this size, uh, which is, you know, part of us, actually. So, uh, it's a much longer debate, but it has to be resolved where communities don't feel scared, worried, leave the country, and don't feel part of the motherland. So, I think that uh, Supreme Court will resolve it, I'm sure. Okay. My last question to you, of course, is uh, having worked with so many top industrialists over the last couple of decades longer, uh, if you had to single out one or two people who really struck you as men of impeccable integrity, people you admire and look up to, who would, who would those be? I think quite a few, not one or two. I think that my interactions with Mr. Tata have been fantastic, not many of them, but fantastic, always clear-headed and the refrain was always, what is the right thing that we should do? I think that has been the DNA of the group for as long as I can remember. Uh, there are other houses which uh, have been absolutely exciting to work for, just in their intellectual brilliance and their execution. Uh, but I would say if I have a fondness for one group, it would be the house.